So I just had a bit of a scare, guys. I thought Murphy's Law really had it in for me today. This is the stack of eight three terabyte hard drives that I'm using to upgrade my storage server that I archive all my footage on and all of that. And uh, it appeared to me not that long ago, you can see the network is critical, which is bad. It appeared to me that I had lost two hard drives at the same time, meaning that the redundancy that Windows Home Server V1 provides um, was not applicable to any data that was on both of the failed hard drives. Um, however, it looks like, upon further inspection, the Western Digital 1TB black that's in there is back up and running, and only the Hitachi right here is actually dead. So, um, that was a real relief because it means that I do have to uh, repair the network data or the uh, the backup database in all likelihood. Oh no, it looks like the backup database is okay. Awesome, those were on the WD. Um, but I do have to uh, I do have to remove the Hitachi drive at some point. So yeah, that's um, very disappointing and very frustrating because it takes a few hours to get that done, and I was really hoping to get these new drives in there and get them uh, get them rated up and get Windows Home Server V2 on here. I had to, oh, sorry, this is just packaging for the new drives. Had to pull out some existing drives. This one failed a little while ago. The wildfire was just in there for testing purposes. There's a few Seagates. These are old Seagates, 7200.10s. All of them survived, um, which is a testament to these particular drives, I guess. Two 320s and a 250. So those are kicking it. Well, kicking back, not working anymore. Well, they work, but they're not going to continue to work for me. Um, whatever, you guys get the point. So the Satachi's going to come out. Uh, that WD is going to move slots, and I'm going to be putting... Oops, sorry. I'm going to be putting the eight new drives in the eight bays at the bottom, and then I'm going to be going with... Uh, you know what? Maybe I'll throw the wildfire in. It's got toggle man, so it should be pretty reliable for the uh, boot drive of Windows Home Server V2, or 2011, whatever you guys want to call it, Veil. Um, it's been brought to my attention that you don't have to use a 240 gig drive. You can get away with a 120 with a little edit during the uh, installation process, so that's a really good thing. And, uh, oh yeah, right, the kicker for all of this was that when the two drives were out, it told me the backup database was failed, and um, I actually just bricked the OS of my wife's computer and was about to use the home server backup restore utility to get her computer back up and running so I thought I had lost pretty much everything but now that that one drive is working I'm in uh, pretty good shape so thanks for coming along for the ride guys and I'll keep you posted on my Windows Home Server upgrade. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews and other, yeah, excuse me, other computer videos. So none of the new drives got detected at all. They're all detecting as zero gigabytes which um, stands to reason since the firmware I'm running on my controller is older than my cat's. So I'm uh, updating the firmware. All I gotta do apparently is this. And... Apparently... That didn't work, so I'll give it another crack. I'll get it, I'll get it updated and then we'll see how things go once we get booted into... back into Windows and create the array. I think I'm gonna go with a RAID 6. That worked. The file name just got truncated. So this is my first boot after uh, updating the firmware. This is new. I hope that's a good sign. Alright, so I'm into my uh, RAID configuration. Physical drives. Let's see if they... Oh, they are detected now! Alright, so I guess we might as well do a quick tutorial on how to create a RAID volume on an Arika RAID card. So we're going to call this uh, RAID 6. I don't have another RAID 6. All my other drives are just pass-through drives, which just means they're standalone drives. RAID set was created successfully. Cool. Um, so let me see. Okay, so I could expand it. I could hmm, activate incomplete raid set. I guess that's pretty much it. I could create hot spares. I can rescue raid sets, delete hot spares. Oh, neat. That's actually not a bad idea. I should probably use one as a hot spare since I don't really need all the capacity 
to go uh, to go with it right now. So what a hot spare will do is if a drive fails, it'll automatically go right in and rebuild the uh, rebuild the array. So let's have a look at the actually oh no not this one sorry. Let's have a look at the volume that has just been created. Disk management, here we go. Uh, refresh. Rescan disks, maybe? There it is. No, wait, that's not it. 20 gigs. Oh. Let's see if we can find it. I wonder if the OS is even compatible. Haven't done this in a while, so uh, for one thing, I screwed up when I created it, and I accidentally created it with only uh, seven drives, so... Okay, there we go. Now it has member disks eight out of eight. Now we have to create a volume set. So we create, select the RAID set to create a volume set. Then we make a volume name, and we're going to call it RAID six again. Okay, volume raid level. This is where we can actually edit the, uh, change the raid level. Volume capacity, maximum 18 terabytes. Excellent. Um, yeah, these are 4K. Foreground initialization should be fine. Let's go with default for all this stuff. Okay. Volumes to be created one. Here we go. Volume set has been created. Now we should be able to see it in disk management. In theory. Theories don't always work out that way. Give me a bit. Ah, uh, yes, it's initializing. I'll be back once it's done. That takes a while. All right, there we go. It is in a RAID state normal now, which means that I can go ahead and disk management. Aha, welcome to the initialize and convert disk wizard. Next, disk 16, initializing, finish. So there is my 16 terabyte volume which has been split up and I forget how this works. Yeah, we need to convert to a GPT disk so that we can make it the full size instead of being limited. So do 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 can be only be accessed from Windows server to them, blah blah blah. Okay. Got it. Primary partition assign X for extreme. Next Re Whoops, apparently I have caps lock on already. Raid 6, perform a quick format, finish. Because the cluster count is higher than expected. That's interesting. Yeah. Why don't we try not a quick, for oh that's going to take forever. Let's try one more time. Oh, okay, well let's see if I can figure this out now. Gotta love extreme hardware. Always just works. Found a great uh, article on the support site for Microsoft for the default cluster sizes for NTFS, and it looks like even though my volume is greater than 16 terabytes, it is not defaulting to eight kilobytes. So as soon as I recreate it, do, 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 do. Using an eight kilobyte, there we go, setting, we should be able to get access to the drive. Formatting and healthy, local disk X, there we go. So now let's run a quick benchmark and find out how fast this RAID 6 is. Now we've all been spoiled by SSDs when it comes to huge ATO scores, but uh, I'm still pretty optimistic so far looking at this sky right here. Holy cow. We've already reached one gigabyte per second in sustained reads at 16K. 
At 30k, we're up to over 1.2 gigabytes per second reads. The writes are slower because we're going to be controller limited on those. So as fast as your RAID controller is, is as fast as you can write to a RAID 6. Um, a RAID 5 would be faster on the writes. Holy smokes, we're up over 1.6 gigs per second. And it looks like that's probably where we're going to peak, so... Wow! 1.5 on that one. So, so yeah, we peak at around 700 megs per second write, and around 1.5 or 1.6 gigs per second read. Just ridiculous. Okay, I'll be back once the, the benchmarks. So there you go, guys. That's what we ended up with. Uh, now let's do another run at a deeper Q depth. So that should give us some interesting results. These are just staggering, staggering numbers for a mechanical setup. Well, not much of an impact on scores. I am curious, though, to see how this array performs in RAID 5 as opposed to RAID 6. So I'll try RAID 5 with a hot spare, which basically gives similar data protection to RAID 6 because you could have two drives fail as long as they don't fail at exactly the same time and the hot spare would swoop right in and take over for the one that failed, whereas RAID 6 can take two failures at the same time. I just want to see how much of a performance difference we see in these write performance in these write performance numbers with RAID 5. So thank you for checking out this little RAID 6 experiment and uh, stay tuned for more on my Windows Home Server upgrade. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips.